Hello again. I have another digital drawing time lapse today, and the subject of this drawing was a very fun fairy to tackle since I think I've drawn maybe a handful of horses. They're beautiful creatures, but I rarely come up with a reason to draw them. Of course, this horse is very special and not actually a horse at all. It's a shape-shifting fairy which doesn't seem to have a true form, but it does have a favorite. The puka is a fairy of the night and most enjoys appearing as a black horse. It can appear as almost anything it wants, including a human, although it seems it always has an animalistic giveaway, such as a pair of animal ears or a tail, even when in human form. Its shape-shifting cannot hide its true fairy self though since its burning eyes will always give it away. Try to imagine you're walking home, maybe a little tipsy, maybe just turned around. It's late and the moonlit night sheds just enough light to help you catch a small movement out of the corner of your eye. When you look, you see nothing but the dark. Dismissing the flicker at the edge of your vision, you continue, quickening your pace as much as you can. A mist begins to gather and it's becoming a little more difficult to see. The hairs on your arms and the back of your neck begin to stand on end. Something isn't quite right, but you hear nothing, see nothing careful. It's at moments like these you shouldn't dismiss those deep down feelings, using logic and sense to convince your brain against something your body already knows. The ground shifts beneath you and quicker than a wink you find yourself astride a large black horse with an impossibly long mane. It's the most stunning but fearsome animal you've ever had the privilege to see. Its eyes glow as wickedly as wildfire. The horse shakes its beautiful head, rears up, and you have to scramble for a handhold or risk tumbling far below to the hard packed ground. Its breath steams around you in an iridescent blue glow, and you think you hear the clink of chains as its hooves hit the ground running. You're flying over hills and valleys faster than you know is possible, and it shouldn't, but it does take you a while to realize you shouldn't have been walking alone so late at night. You've crossed paths with a puka, and now you're at its mercy. Squeezing your eyes shut as the puka jumps over cliffs and rough terrain, you cling for dear life as your body is bounced and jostled. Your hand slips, and you feel yourself falling sideways. And just as you're grasping for another hold, the puka leaps and you're falling. This is it, you think. Here's where it ends. The wind whips, the air is cold and hard, and suddenly the puka is beneath you again, and it's all you can do to attain a handhold. Your body is sore and your muscles failing to keep you astride the massive fairy horse. You realize you can't go on much longer when it unceremoniously dumps you in cold, dirty, shallow water. The puka whinnies. To you, it sounds like a harsh, loud braying of a laugh, and it takes off moments before you notice the sun is creeping over the horizon. You've survived a ride with the puka, but sore and exhausted as you are, you realize you're in a bog, further from home than you were even last night. You're about to have a very, very long day. November is the month of the puka. It is the most active at this time of year, running about, gathering up the gifts of harvest left for it. If it's November 1st, you'll be in luck to run into the puka. On this day, any question can be put to this fairy. It can and will answer you as it has a gift of speech. Most often, the puka enjoys its tricks and games, but on the first day of November, it is entirely tame and cooperative. 
The puka isn't a naturally malicious fairy. It just is. Sometimes it feels generous and will offer gifts and or useful advice. Maybe it will indicate the best spot to plant for next year's harvest. Or tell you to avoid a certain path on a particular night. It could give you a special gift, which you'll be able to use to your benefit the rest of your days. Or, if you're very lucky, maybe it'll whisper the location of some long-lost currency. It is also just as likely to give you a prophecy with a twinkle in its burning eyes which will confuse more than it will help. But such is the nature of this fairy of the mountains and the hills. If you've blundered and given the puka less respect and deference than it deserves, well, then in such a case, you'll be sure to have a night you'll wish you could forget. The puka delights in its games, and nothing seems to tickle its fancy more than a wild ride through the night with an unlucky human in tow. Although it delights in confusing and scaring the wits out of humans, the puka very rarely does any actual harm. It will return its rider to where the ride began, or if it was particularly annoyed, a good deal further away. Frightened maybe, disoriented most probably, but without any bodily affliction. If you were to feel particularly at risk of running into a puka and weren't in the mood to be wrenched from the earth and carried around in such a manner, it's been told that wearing a pair of sharp iron spurs will dissuade a puka not only from taking a human, but that it will absolutely refuse to allow them a ride. The puka learned long ago the pain of the spurs and did not enjoy the taming effect it had on its usually mischievous nature. If you can manage to get astride a puka without it knowing you have these spurs on, it's possible you could use the puka to your own devices. If you want to attempt this, know it will likely fail since the only human ever known to ride the puka with any success was the High King of Ireland and he only managed it because he'd been able to gather three hairs of the puka and use them to fashion a bridle, which allowed him to overpower the puka's nature. Just exercise caution if you decide on such a course of action. Risking the wrath of the fairies is something most would rather avoid. There is, as always, much more to this fairy of the night. There is a little more information on my website, if you'd like to see that, there's a link in the description box below. Remember, November is this fairy's month, and it will be on the lookout for unsuspecting wandering humans. Don't wander around alone at night. Be safe, and thanks for listening. Take care.